Good evening and welcome inside Gutterson Fieldhouse here on the campus of the University of Vermont for our second night of VPA sponsored state championship hockey. Last night, a night for Division I, tonight D2. And to start us off, a matchup between the Woodstock Wasps and the Kingdom Blades, two teams that skate into this Division II girls hockey championship with identical records, 18 and four. Two teams that have seen one another three times already this year. And of course, as you'd expect with two teams of this caliber, they each have won games against one another. Kingdom Blades taking the first in their head-to-head -head meetings this year, three to two. Woodstock bouncing back with a 5-3 win in the second head-to-head -head meeting. And things got a little bit tighter in the third one back on February the 11th. The Blades winning it one nothing at Woodstock. Interestingly, the road team won each of their three regular season contests. But tonight they play at a neutral site. And we expect it will be a very good one. Again, already two one-goal games between these two teams. And, of course, the extra win going to the Blades. The Blades, the team in black, Woodstock in white. They are the reigning D2 champs, having beaten Hartford last year by a final score of 5-2. to two. So they're looking to repeat as Division II state champions and off the opening faceoff, they carry it into the Kingdom Blade end to get us started the first of our three 15-minute periods. There will be a boys Division II hockey championship to follow That'll be between Mount Mansfield and U32, but that's the last you'll hear me talk about that as we focus all of our attention on this first meeting here. Nice crowd, too. Both schools pretty well represented on the far side of the ice. Tripped up in the corner going down is Graceland LaPearl, junior forward for the Wasps. Trying to be the second B to win a state championship. Last night, the Essex Hornets outlasting a pretty solid Rice team, winning 2-0 the second of their two goals in empty netter. It was really a 1-0 game. Every way you slice it, tight defensive struggle in the girls' Division I championship last night. It was the Spalding Crimson Tide finishing off a perfect season, undefeated with the title. They beat a pretty solid squad of Sea Lakers by a final score of 4-0. Action down in the Kingdom Blades end. Still waiting for our first shot. Everything's been kept to the perimeter. And a nice job poking the puck up ice by Fiona, or rather Ella Blyce for the Blades. Blyce then plays the puck on the far wall. Can't keep it in, though. Thrown through the neutral zone and across the end line, but not for icing. I believe the Kingdom Blade player had a stick on it, and now a three-on-three -three rush up ice left to right for the Blades team that's comprised of girls from St. Johnsbury Academy, Blue Mountain, Linden Institute, North Country, and Lake Region. A couple of others mixed in as well when you get down into the eighth graders on the club. Carefully playing it in front of their own net, out to the center circle, where Piconi, defenseman, has it for the Wasps, gets it back across the blue line, but no further. Nice job there to stay onside. First shot, sails up high over the crossbar, over the head of Taylor Blyce. Now an opportunity coming out of the neutral zone, into the left wing circle, into the corner. Really interesting how this first 230 has been played really right along the boards all over the ice. Haven't seen many chances taken in front of the net. When somebody's gone in front of a net, it's been a defensive player, as we just saw there in the case of Isabel Cronenberg, one of the seniors on the Woodstock side. But ultimately here, Woodstock ices the puck. And so we'll take it back down into the Wasps' end in front of their boisterous crowd. Puck on the ice, one into the near side boards, but then worked out nicely by Woodstock. Had a little trouble getting organized before getting across the Blades' blue line. 
And two chances on the second effort. Sarah Tanner got it out and then gave it away. Dumped in. Three minutes in, still no shots yet. None on goal anyway. Couple of attempts from the Wasps that have either been wide or high. Nearly a giveaway in that far circle. But careful stick handling and movement here. One on five. Taking it all the way up ice, everything but the shot. I think that was Shapiro. Walking away with it though for the Woodstock Wasps. Lily Gubbins held in. Brought into the near circle. Turned around at the hash and stripped. For a puck that looks like it's gonna be ice. Yeah, it will be icing on Woodstock. 3.51 into the first period. Still waiting for our first shot. I just told you the last matchup between these two teams, a one nothing affair. Woodstock, typically a high fly and high scoring team. They average five goals per game. The Blades average just about four per game. Again, identical records, 18 and four in the regular season, just feeling one another out here. And their fourth head-to-head -head matchup. You really know your opponent after you've played three times, so perhaps it should be as no surprise that they've expected, well, they've read each other's tendencies pretty well here in the early going. And this will not be icing even if it gets to the goal line as it was a Woodstock player that fired it down ice. Blades get on the puck first. A good job to ride her off it by Hannah Gubbins. Takes a shoulder. Puck goes to the far corner. Ella Blyce sends it up high. Winding up for a slap shot. That gets through. First shot, first save for Meridian Bremel. And then good stick work. The captain there for Woodstock, Isabel Cronenberg, lifting the stick, not allowing that shot. We get on to the net. We'll hit it along the end boards and then set up to the point. Evans gets it down low. Good feed in front. Shot from the slot deflected over the net. Best look yet. That was Maggie Mello. Held in here on the clear attempt. Shot tipped. Backhanded wide. In front. Another opportunity for Mello there. Tried to jam it. Her stick met that of the Blades goaltender. But now the Wasps really starting to find a feel in the offensive end. Strong play. The backhand pass from Conenberg. Six minutes in. Still just one shot on the board. Wasps looking for their first, though they've had some pressure. Hasn't translated to a shot, not yet. With the puck here for the Blades, Brooklyn Chanyer. Chanyer in between a trio of Woodstock players, worked off the puck, cleared across the blue line. Blades keep possession. A Little bit of a pirouette and Flip across the blue line by Brianna Waterman. A few Kingdom Blades players get bunched up there. Allows Woodstock to take it up the near side, but not out. Good challenge to keep it in. This time, though, it's poked past Morgan Rivard. Cassidy Haley looked for a moment as if she might have the burst of speed to get her onto the puck. Never materialized. And now it's Rivard again. Good pass. Just onto the ice, Ella Blyce. Almost halfway through this first period now, 7.55 to play in it. One shot on net. In that Essex Rice game last night, the boys' D1 championship was, hello, here's a chance. Weaving her way in front, just waiting an extra second too long. Not getting a shot away, another opportunity missed for the Blades. That Rice team didn't fire a shot on goal in a scoreless game in the third period until more than half the period had passed. 
until they fell behind 1-0. And there's a shot, first one from Woodstock. It was a good one, too. Nice save by Blyce. Point being of that Rice anecdote that sometimes when you're forced into a situation where you have to start shooting, being down one nothing halfway through the third period, all of a sudden you find a gear you didn't know you had. Rice was playing a really conservative game through the first 40 minutes. Still found themselves down a goal, and they kind of threw caution to the wind at that point. Played a lot more free-flowing game. Looked a lot better. And perhaps these two schools would do well just to think of that example. You want to play a sound defensive game. You don't want to make any crucial mistakes in a game of this magnitude. Is a big-time stick there. Help to sweep it out of danger. That was Alexandra Mosher coming up with the play near her net. Now Mosher has it. Looking to send a pass up high to Griffith. That was read well by the Wasps and neutralized. Blades still have it though. They'll try to send it back in. Pass too far out in front of Chanyer. So Woodstock able to play it back to the Lily Gubbins half of the defensive pair. She in turn gets it on to Cassidy Haley. Haley, a nifty move into the slot, moving towards the net. Backhand shot went wide of the glove side. And another pretty good look for Woodstock. And a good recovery by Hannah Gubbins. Cross ice feed, shot up high. Makes a thud off the glass behind the Blades net. Coming on to 5.30 to play in this first period. Still scoreless. Very few whistles in this first period. We're in the midst of a really lengthy run of play without one. You want to be careful, but there comes a point, it seems like, where you can be just a little bit too careful and forget that you need to score a goal tonight, and it's not as if you can hold on for a tie. You just keep playing in these championship games till somebody wins it. Need to find a way to get pucks on net. And that goes for both sides. Morgan Rivard, freshman for the Blades, tries to bank it ahead. She finds herself back with it. Guides the puck ahead to a teammate. And that's Gaudreau. Took a couple of whacks, but the Blades able to clear it out of the zone. Wasps send it right back in, and somebody just lost an edge, went down. A lot of zone time for Woodstock starting to pile up. Haven't been able to turn that into very many chances. Pass just beyond the reach of Laura Audsley. Audsley a sophomore, a lot of underclass players on this team. In fact, Woodstock has just three seniors. The Kingdom Blades have none. So as good as these schools are, and clearly the top two schools in Division Two, though the Blades were the three seed, they knocked off the two seed Burr and Burton 6-1 in the semifinal to get here. As good as these two teams are, they'll probably be getting better ahead of next season. With all the talent returning, literally all of it for the Blades. And all but three coming back for Woodstock. 3.25 left. A trip at the blue line will send us to our first power play of the night. Woodstock will have it. We'll see if they can take advantage of it. Really good skating. Putting Sarah Tanner in a really uncomfortable position. Just had her stick on the ice in the wrong place. No mystery to that call. And a face-off win for Woodstock. Let's see this power play at work. Cronenberg goes cross ice. Return feed was knocked back towards the blue line, played ahead by Gubbins. 
Both Hannah and Lily Gubbins on the ice right now. Shot from Lily, blocked in front of the net. And knocked out to the red line by the Blades. There goes the first 30 seconds of power play time. Woodstock looking pretty comfortable on the power play. Shot here, explodes high from Cassidy Haley. Now Lily Gubbins from the top of the right circle puts it towards goal, misses wide, near side. Held in at the blue line by Hannah Gubbins. There's a drive, gets through, it's in the blue paint. Puck still loose. Down on the ice very awkwardly is Blyce. She's having trouble climbing back to her skates as we play on with 55 seconds left on the power play. Puck in the left circle. Haley didn't have a lane. Great job by Blyce fighting back to her skates after somehow keeping it out. Makes a nice pad save there. Rebound collected and shot across the blue line and on the second effort down ice by Isabel Goudreau. And you can hear the sigh of relief from that Kingdom Blade bench. Scary moments with the puck in the paint. And now it's hauled back in for a shot. Took a stick with it and winds up in the glove of Blyce, much to the delight of the Blades fans who traveled a pretty good distance to get here. When you're talking about coming from North Country, you're coming about two hours down here. And you know this team appreciates their fan support. Shot from the point, stick save, and a clear, which will pretty much kill off the rest of this power play. Blades had the first shot of the period, five since from Woodstock. Back to even strength in two and one second. Here we are, five on five. Wasps moving towards the net, looking to center, there it is. Blyce goes down, getting whacked in the helmet with sticks and knees and skates, but she's able to keep the puck out. And her team can reset before this next faceoff. Great power play for Woodstock, everything but the goal. Good way to get the offense working. Ahead of these final 73 seconds of the first period. Randy Fortin just came onto the ice. She'll move in to take the face off for the Blades. Big face off win there. And a spot of rough luck as the pass deflects off a skate up into the Blades bench. So they win the defensive zone draw, but now they have to win one just in front of the bench. Trying to keep it in on the near side. Gubbins couldn't do it. Puck goes the length, well rink wide I guess, the length of the blue line. And then banked on ahead with a full head of steam. It's Cronenberg in front and she scores. What an outstanding individual effort by the captain for Woodstock, Isabel Cronenberg. With 34 seconds left in the first, she gives her team the lead. An electric play. From a great player here for Woodstock. And that is really tough to swallow if you're the Blades. Having seen Woodstock put seven straight shots on goal you fight off the first six. You had Blythe standing on her head, doing everything she could on that power play, keeping the game tied, but 
Cronenberg would not be denied in that last rush. She has the puck again, and after scoring a goal like that, she's going to probably take a nose towards the net, maybe see if she can't get another chance here late. 18 seconds, good indirect pass. Bounced off the stick of Maggie Mello. Three seconds and one. That won't be enough for a point shot. Oh, that shot fired after the horn. You know the Blades are going to remember that one when we get into the second period. But pretty solid start from the Kingdom Blades. A really strong finish from the Woodstock Wasps. Buoyed by the power play, they go on to score. The only goal of the game thus far. Isabel Conenberg has it one nothing after one. We'll take a break for our... Intermission. Welcome back to the VPA Girls Division II Hockey Championship being played tonight between the Woodstock Wasps and Kingdom Blades. one nothing Wasps after one period of play. Puck is on the ice to start the second period. Woodstock in white, the Blades in black. And just one shot on the board for the Blades after the first period. They'll have to find another gear. Actually took the first shot of the game. We went four minutes without any shots. Then we went about another four minutes before Woodstock fired their first on Taylor Blyce. But after that, it was all Woodstock. They had a power play with about four minutes left. Put all kinds of pressure on Blyce and the Blades. Did not score. But inside the final minute, one of Woodstock's captains, Isabel Conenberg, scored yet another goal against this Blades team. She registered a hat trick against the Kingdom Blades back on January the 11th in the lone Woodstock win in the previous three meetings between these teams. And we'll see if the Blades can come out and do something to level the score. And before you even talk about leveling the score, the Blades are gonna have to find a way to put some kind of pressure on Meridian Bremel. Face just the one shot, had a good look at it too. Conversely, that can be tough for a goaltender to go so long without seeing a shot. You have to keep yourself mentally engaged. Blades now working it right to left in on the attack. But you see there going to the outside, Morgan Rivard. I'd like to see her as she charges towards the dot in the circle, take a cut towards the net instead of that outer hash. Good stick handling here by Gabby Young. Young centers for a chance, and that was a point-blank beauty of a save by Bremel. And there's a good chance for the Kingdom Blades for their second shot of the night. Isabel Goudreau. Beaten on the draw. Along the end wall, Lily Gubbins tied up. Sends the puck to the far side of the rink. From behind the red line, banged off the far boards by Lily, Lila Beckwith. Blades trying to work it out of the defensive end here. Centering feed, rolls through the slot. Claimed by Brooklyn Shawnier. Shot from the point, blocked on release. Snatched up by Gubbins, Lily Gubbins. Puts it onto the stick of Laura Odsley. Gubbins tries to fire it through some blades skates. Puck bounces back to her. Nice backhand drop. Great bit of skating by Conenberg. Conenberg on the puck. Trying to kick it to her stick. Conenberg with it here. Backhands it up high. Picconi. Good work to shield the puck from the defensive pressure. Conenberg has trouble hauling that one in. Had a little too much on it. He gets tied up. 
with a Kingdom Blades player. They both go down to the ice. Connenberg without a stick is the last layer of defense here. She'll have to give up the body. She dives. Shot gets through, and the save is made by Bremel. Two great chances for the Blades in the first three and a half minutes of this second period. They've come out and done exactly what they've needed to do to get back into this game, though still down one. They look like they are much more alive and engaged than they were in the opening 15 minutes where they really look to be playing a super tentative game. Maggie Mello. Able to help work that puck out for Woodstock. Blades skating a lot faster, it seems, here in the second period. Up along the near side for Young. Young sends it back to Griffith. Griffith will go cross ice to Isabella Butler. Butler runs into a brick wall, goes down. Now here comes Woodstock. LaPearl. Couldn't get past the blue line, so they'll try the far side with Haley leading the rush. She has it stripped away by Morgan Rivard. Rivard whiffs at the bottom of the near circle. Almost disastrous with Maggie Mello hanging out in the neighborhood. Now Lila Beckwith four checking. Approaching five minutes played in this second period. Still one nothing Woodstock. Blades on the move. Shot blocked. That was Randy Fortin with the shot attempt. That shot again kicked in front of the net by Lily Gubbins. Great play. Great stick handling, Connenberg trying to weave her way through every single Blades player on the ice, wipes out one. We lost the stick, she's back to retrieve. Loose puck in front of the Blades bench. Banked back up towards the red line. Collected. And brought up ice by Cassidy Haley. Haley still stick handling, nice poke check to take it away by Fortin. Now a moment of indecision. for Meridian Bremel, but it winds up being icing. So it winds up being a great decision by Bremel not to spring out of her cage to play that puck. Read it right. And now look out, opportunity for Butler. Butler a two on one, she holds, shoots! Oh, she had Gabby Young all alone, streaking towards the near post. Elected to shoot, shot it high. Good looking two on one opportunity there. Goes by the boards for the Blades, and now a steal behind the Kingdom Blade net. Carried to the near hash, back with Gabby Young. Young a burst of speed to get across the blue line. Get it out into the neutral zone, but goes no further. Connenberg just had one to beat. It was Griffith. Griffith, though, steals the puck. Griffith tries a shot. That's blocked by Fiona Picconi. Griffith back with it in the near corner. Centers. Winds up on the far side of the ice. Two defenders converge. Can't win the puck away. Goes behind the net with 8.20 to play in the second period. And there's a pretty nasty hit in the corner that will lead to a Blades penalty. And a Woodstock power play. Isabella Butler, the guilty party there. A hit from behind. I think that's going to be five minutes. Well, they have two up on the board. Just trying to read the official's hand signal. Yeah, they take the two minutes off. 
I think this is going to be a major penalty. It is. Five minute major penalty, so the Woodstock Wasps will be on the power play for the next five minutes with only 8.15 left in the period. And with a one nothing lead, this is the kind of thing that can completely change a game and it really wrecks the momentum that the Blades had built up, at least on paper, to this point in this period. You never know. Could turn into a big time penalty kill that builds a new kind of momentum. And that's asking a lot of this young team. Not a single senior on the Blades. Woodstock has it set up. Conenberg 20 with the puck. Plays a close range game, a back and forth with Hannah Gubbins. Now cross ice, Lily Gubbins winds up, shot wide. Conenberg. Back to Hannah Gubbins and Conenberg again. Cross ice, saucer pass. Lily Gubbins, the shot. A teammate had been knocked down in front. That was Graceland the Pearl. The Pearl wound up blocking that shot. Credit the Blades, and I think specifically Brianna Waterman for knocking her off her skates. Now here's Conenberg in the far circle. She's hit as she let the shot go. Good defending there, and hey, Kingdom Blades have killed off the first minute 15 of this five minute major penalty. Quickly up ahead for La Pearl. La Pearl struggles to haul in the return pass. Now a shot from Hannah Gubbins goes high. Might have touched the knob of goaltender Taylor Blyce's stick. Back out to the red line. I like this calm, measured approach from Woodstock with all the power play time, 3.15 left. Now Haley stops, puts a shot on target, and it goes wide by an inch. Didn't see who got the last piece of it before it went sliding softly by the near side post, and I think we're going to get a penalty on Woodstock to level things here. I think it's on Haley, Cassidy Haley. Two minutes for a hook. And so for the next two minutes, we'll play four on four and then back to a minute of power play time for the Wasps. Great job by the Kingdom Blades killing the first two minutes of the major. And now we'll see what some four on four action looks like between these two very evenly matched teams. Starts with an offside. You could see the thought process there from Gabrielle Griffith. Couldn't collect the pass on the right side of the blue line. Wound up having to take it back in. She tried to stop herself. The call is a hook, two minutes to Haley. Conenberg on the far wall, can't work it out for the Wasps, but on the second effort, she does. It's moving across the red line, barrels in. Player on her back, she shields the puck. Goes cross ice for Gubbins, winds up, slap shot through! Big time save for Blyce, rebound, backhand chance, doesn't get on target. Conenberg jostling to maintain possession, does so. Gets it ahead to Gubbins. The Wasps fire it deep. We're through the first minute of four on four play. We have 5-10 to play in the second period. Still one nothing Woodstock in this Division II Girls State Championship game. Conenberg and Gubbins, boy, have they had a lot of ice time together. Not only tonight, but obviously throughout their successful careers. Woodstock winning last year's D2 State Championship, 5-1 over Hartford. Now Graceland the Pearl tries it from close range. Second chance, kept out. They snap it back to the point. Picconi 
Left-handed shot defenseman sends it down low. Out of the box comes Cassidy Haley. And back on the power play go the Woodstock Wasps. Blades figure that out, fire it up ice. And it deflects to Gabby Young, tries one from a good scoring area. And again, up over the crossbar. A lot of Kingdom Blade shots have missed high, as that one does there. Might have gone wide, too. Terrific penalty killing by the team from the Kingdom. They have the puck down in the Woodstock end. Keeping it there for most of this last minute of the five minute major penalty that was assessed to Isabella Butler for boarding. Good stick work to finally get it out by Pacconi, but she can't connect on the pass intended for LaPearl. Trying to carry it in, Cassidy Haley. Couldn't get past that final stick. And with 3.15 to play in the period, we are back to even strength. And a pass narrowly misses the newly freed Isabella Butler. Can't catch up to it, it is an icing. But hey, if you're the Kingdom Blades, that's really something to build on. Killing off the five minute major. Just beyond the reach. Icing again. Three minutes exactly remaining in the second period. And wouldn't you know that through 27 minutes of play, the Kingdom Blades have just three shots on goal. Woodstock just nine, but... The Blades are going to have to find a way to get pucks on net. The two chances, the two shots early in this period, both good chances. Both testing Meridian Bremel. But they haven't created any second chance opportunities. There's another good chance without a, any kind of rebound. Credit Bremel for not allowing those second chance opportunities. Ella Blyce to take the attacking zone face off, she wins it. Blyce in to help out, backhanded deep by Griffith. Played back along the near wall by the Woodstock Wasps. Gubbins to Graceland the Pearl. The Pearl can't get it past Ella Blyce. Oh, and then that puck just rolls off Blyce's stick blade. And Conenberg gets to work on the attack. Conenberg keeps skating into the right circle. Fires a shot from the bottom of that right circle. Nice right pad save made by Blyce. With 2.05 left in the second. A Woodstock goal here would really be devastating from the Blades' perspective. Because if you're this team in black, the Kingdom Blades, you have to be thinking, all right, if we get into this third period down a goal, I like our chances, but a 2-0 deficit would be awfully hard to overcome. Great save by Blyce to keep it at 2-0. She's still looking for it. Fortunately had help. Teammates able to sweep it out of danger. Now Gabby Young as this game has opened up finally for the Blades. Though I guess you could say in opening up for the Blades, the Wasps have found some good chances too. Up to 11 shots now. Puck down in their attacking end. With a minute 15 left. Across the blue line. Shot way wide from Sarah Tanner. One Wasp player took care of the body. The other took care of the puck. Skating it across the blue line only to have it shot right back in. Fed in front. Knocked to the far wall, now a shot pass in front, tip, shot and a good stick save. Second chance, there it is, and another fine save by Meridian Bremel. 
Finally gave up a rebound, took nearly 30 minutes of hockey before she did. After making the initial save, kicked out the second one too. Blades building something though. And hey, the Wasps scored their first period goal inside the final minute. Let's see if the Blades can't get another good look or two here with 39.9 seconds left. Into the corner. Fed high for Tanner. Tanner puts it in front. Off the stick of Blyce. And now ahead, just missing Graceland the Pearl, who would have had a chance to win a race. Take the puck in alone on Taylor Blyce instead because she failed to haul in that pass. Play goes down as icing. 25.6 seconds left. Shot, stick save, kind of an awkward save there for Bremel, had to fight it off. Conenberg will be careful with it, skates it behind her own net. Fewer than 10 seconds remain in the period, she shields the puck, gets it to Lily Gubbins, and that'll be all for the first 30 minutes and still a minimum score contest after two, one nothing Wasps in front. They're 15 minutes away from repeating as Division II girls state champions. But the Kingdom Blades are coming on and I have a feeling that Meridian Bremel is gonna have to do a lot of hard work for the Wasps if they are to win this game. Stick around, we expect a great third period here from Gutterson Fieldhouse, one nothing Wasps after two. We've got a good one going tonight at Gutterson Fieldhouse here on the campus of University of Vermont in the Girls Division II Hockey Championship. A one nothing lead with one period to play. It's the Woodstock Wasps on top of the Kingdom Blades. A late charge in the second period where the Blades showed some life. Wasn't quite enough to get them even on the scoreboard. We'll see if they're able to maintain that net first approach that they finally took to in those last five minutes or so of the period after killing off a five minute major penalty. It really started right before they took the major penalty. And you could say for the second half of the period, they were the better team. Now they throw the puck towards Meridian Bremel's net, carry it to the near wall and, and an attempted point pass actually send it down ice. One minute at a time on the other side for the Woodstock Wasps and a great chance fed in front to the lone goal scorer tonight, Conenberg. Big time stop by Blyce, not a minute into this third period. If you're in a black jersey, you've got to keep tabs on number 20 in white, Isabel Conenberg, playing in her last game as a Wasp tonight. Looking to finish her high school career as a two-time Division II champion, back-to-back -back Division II champion. A 5-1 win in the title game last year for the Wasps. Now a move towards the net, punched out by the stick of Bremel. Cleared out in front of the Woodstock fan base. Now a chance, two-on-one, developing and a right shoulder save for Blyson Conenberg, who seems determined to double her team's lead, but a counterattack. Taking shape, nice backhand pass. Leads to a backhand shot that's blocked. Second opportunity, stick save on Gabby Young. Young, an eighth grader for the Blades, who's definitely been an impact player tonight. Has a very bright future ahead of her. Shot from the point blocked. Woodstock carries out to the neutral zone. And then ices the puck with 13-18 to play in this third period. Been a long time since the Kingdom Blades lost. You have to go all the way back to the 11th of January. So three months, or two months I guess, since the last loss. It was a game at home against Woodstock. Wasps beat them 5-3. That was the one win for the Wasps in the previous three meetings of this head-to-head -head matchup. But after that loss, the Blades just going on a huge winning streak that spanned 14 games, including the 3-0 win in the quarterfinal round of the playoffs and a 6-1 win over Burr and Burton in the semifinal playoff game. 
Meanwhile, Woodstock had a little bit of a bump in their schedule in the first half of February, losing twice. Once to the Blades, 1-0. Once at Middlebury by a 2-1 final. But since that February 11th loss at home against the Blades, the Wasps have rattled off five straight wins. And they get the puck out of their defensive end here. Getting it to the red line. And here's a giveaway. Conenberg sets it up in front and they score. Cassidy Haley doubles the Woodstock lead on the feed from Conenberg. It's two zip. That's a tough one to swallow for the Blades. They had puck possession in the neutral zone and then the skates just wouldn't cooperate. Player goes down to the ice leading to a two on none chance led by Conenberg who found her teammate Haley alone in front and Haley didn't miss. Give her lots of credit for snapping that shot accurately into the open side of the net that faced her. And let's see if that's enough to make it back-to-back -back state championships for Woodstock. Pass back to the point. Now fed in front. Good job there to tie up the stick. Not allow another chance. Cleared out here by the Blades. That looked to be a bit of frustration coming out on that icing play. I think it was Gabrielle Griffith that went down for the Blades. One of the ninth graders, she was in the starting lineup tonight. She's played a great game. Just had her legs go out from underneath her at the worst possible time. Now it's Morgan Rivard. Doing great work to shield the puck from a couple of wasps. Leading to the Blades, pitching it through the neutral zone. Nice backhand pass, meanwhile, from Lily Gubbins. On to Conenberg, who I expect we'll see out there for much of the remainder of this game and this season. 11.35 left in this game and this season, unless we need to go to overtime. Blades will need to keep putting pucks on Meridian Bremel. Bremel made 16 saves last time she faced the Blades. She's made eight so far tonight. And icing here, the call on the Blades. Right wing circle face off. Upended off the draw with Sarah Tanner for Kingdom Blades. Tanner knocked off her skates again. Now fed into the circle. Great puck battle between Tanner and Graceland the Pearl. Goes to the far wall. Tanner ultimately wins it out. But Conenberg carries back in. She'll shoot from the slot. Blocked by a pair of Blades players. Now Conenberg operating out of the corner. Sends it towards the net mouth. Back with her here, left wing boards. Up high, Hannah Gubbins, backhand indirect pass. On to Conenberg, cross ice the feed for a slap shot. Pretty good wood, but wide. This is the way Woodstock needs to keep playing with the lead. Play like you're only up one nothing. 10-20 left in the third. They certainly don't look like a team that's just skating out time. But now a full head of steam here. Slipping it through the defense. Nicely brought up ice by Gabby Young. Couldn't quite get a good shot in on Bremel. But now Young will move out towards the slot as a two-a-side puck battle continues in the far corner. From her belly played across by one of the Blades players. Collected by Haley. Haley's pass, though, intended for LaPearl, missed. And the result is icing with 9.41 left in the third. A reminder that the Division II Boys Championship will follow this game 
Originally scheduled to start at eight o'clock. I would expect we'll come pretty close to hitting our eight o'clock start time unless we go to overtime. Shot off a few legs changing directions a couple of times on the way towards Bremel. Never did get all the way through. But Bremel will stay alert looking to her right. The puck carried over there by Rivard. Backhand pass from along the goal line. Knocked away by two Woodstock players. And that Woodstock student section really getting into it now. Their team 9-10 away from a state title. That's the type of play the Woodstock needs to avoid. A little too much time left to simply be icing the puck. Ella Blyce couldn't beat Cronenberg on the draw. Spanked out. Cronenberg has help. Oh, she tried to get it to Haley again. Haley was on her left. Had that pass gotten through, it would have been Cassidy Haley in alone on Taylor Blyce. Now a shot whipped wide by LaPearl. Coming down from the far point, putting it on the tape. For a backhand shot that was blocked. Skated up ice by Tanner. Or rather Ella Blyce. With Tanner the next layer. Tanner gets her stick. Tied up in the midsection of Piconi. Piconi here. Skating her way out of danger. And dumping it in for Woodstock with just about eight minutes left to play. You don't want to be icing the puck from deep in the defensive end, but it's all right at this stage to be playing a dump and chase game when the opportunity presents itself. Whatever you can do to keep that puck away from Bremel, that's got to be the game plan. Bremel will look to her left as Piconi goes back to get it. Been a long shift for Fiona Piconi. No icing. One of the Blades players, Isabel Gaudreau, being told she could have played it. And so on we go, halfway through the third now. Here's Goudreau into the slot, couldn't get the shot away. Goudreau's had some success against this Woodstock team this year. Scored the game winner in their first head-to-head -head meeting in December. Puck tied up, three wasps, two blades. One puck. Through the near corner. Not out yet. Tick, tick, tick though. 6.50 left in the period, 6.51 when the icing whistle blows. Blades need to win this face off and get things set up. Get pucks towards net. That has to be the message, simple as it sounds. It's proven quite difficult tonight. Kingdom Blades managing just one shot in the first period. Put six shots on goal in the second and they put their second shot on here in the third and score. It's Gabby Young pulling her team back within one. Started with a point shot though it was partially blocked by Cronenberg. It squirted through her legs. Onto the stick of Gabby Young who turned around and whipped it past Meridian Bremel. Big time goal from the eighth grader in the title game. And the Blades are alive with 6.45 left to play. Even if you don't have an angle or a clear shooting lane, just throw it towards net. Trying to skate it out here, knocked back in for a moment by Cronenberg, then iced. So Woodstock will have an opportunity to win an attacking zone faceoff. That goal energizing the Kingdom Blades fan base. The 
Blades win the faceoff, start to move it. Skating with purpose, Isabella Butler into the near corner. Butler run into from behind. Oh, a centering feed, almost got through. All alone in front was Blyce. All the Wasps were playing the puck. They forgot to guard Ella Blyce. Now pass cross ice for Cassidy Haley. Haley tried to put it out in front where LaPearl was hanging out. Kept in by Conenberg nicely, shielding the puck. Dishes it across for a shot glove save. Taylor Blyce saw it all the way, didn't allow a rebound. A 2-1 game with 5.51 to play in the third period. We're set up for a fantastic finish in this girls' division two championship. A couple of Woodstock players went down off the faceoff. Now a shot for Gubbins, tipped in front. Where's the puck? Never did get through. In the near corner, played carefully ahead to Brooklyn Shawnier. And now a great effort to go get that puck. Never did quite grab a hold of it. Shot in deep by Fiona Picconi. Woodstock again wants to be playing down on this end of the ice. You know the Blades are getting their chances though, at least one or two more. And Meridian Brem will be up to the task. She's faced just two shots through the first 10 minutes, 10 seconds of this third period, was beaten on one of the two. Woodstock, meanwhile, with five shots already. There's six and seven. Two terrific right pad saves by Blyce. I think the second one was even better than the first. This is the kind of open game that the Kingdom Blades need to keep playing. But it does come with its risks. And now it comes with Haley in front. Denied. Big time save. Taylor Blyce with the glove. What a sequence from the freshman netminder. The only, or I should say, one of two Lake Region representatives. The other, of course, her sister, Ella. Wow, did she just keep this game alive single-handedly for her team. The two pad saves and then robbing Haley with the glove. And the Blades take the ensuing face off, cross the red line. It's Ella Blyce. Trying to send it out in front where there were a couple of teammates hanging out. Shot off glass and look out, it's another two on one for Woodstock. Shot off the post. Great chance there for Hannah Gubbins. Whistle blows. And I don't know why. Net was not dislodged. I don't think the puck went out of play. Three fifty-four left. The action really heating up now. Game got off to a tremendously slow start. Went about five minutes before we had a shot on goal for either team. That feels like a distant memory now. With everything on the line, we're going to continue to see this maximum effort and just chance after chance on both ends of the ice. Really fine play by Sarah Tanner using the body to keep the puck in. Sends it around to the far corner. Then it gets chipped to Shawnier. Stepping in to play it, Gabrielle Griffith. Blades doing a great job keeping it in, but they're playing that perimeter game reminiscent of the first period. And they need to be taking that puck towards the net at all costs. Knocked out by Woodstock. They'll change at least a couple of skaters. Flip through the neutral zone. Onto a blade stick. A little bit of a trip. 
Didn't get called, so we play on with 2.45 to play. You could have easily sent Cassidy Haley to the box for a trip as she got the toe of her stick into the toes of Gabrielle Griffith, but no call, so here we go. Woodstock with the puck, and an ill-advised shot, in my opinion, from Haley. It was blocked out into the neutral zone. Fortunately for Woodstock, Ella Blyce just skated into the back of a teammate, knocked herself down. Blades with possession, Sarah Tanner, dangerous pass, but it gets through. Trying to connect with Gabby Young. You want Young on the ice, she's shown some electricity tonight for the Blades. And scored the lone goal. Played behind the cage by Rivard. But they score! Oh my! Looked like an own goal there. Rivard was playing a dangerous game, carried behind her own net, carried it right into the crease, and Woodstock has a two goal lead with a minute 56 left. Heartbreak for the Blades. Just when you felt like they were coming on to really give it their best chance with the final two minutes, they take a timeout. There really wasn't a wasp in the neighborhood. And Taylor Blyce slowly making her way to the bench. Part of that timeout, they show the Woodstock cheering section on the big board here at Gutterson Fieldhouse. What a thrill for these kids. Be out here two years in a row, both as players in many cases and as fans to cheer their team on. Twenty-one shots to nine, the advantage for the Woodstock Wasps. Blades still have a little bit of life. But they will need some magic to score twice. Heck, the way this game's been going, they'll need some magic just to get two shots on goal in these final two minutes. Only two shots so far the entire period. Nine in the entire game. Through 43 minutes. They'll keep Blyce in net for now. It's a little too soon to think about pulling her. But she has to be ready to move towards the bench if the Blades are able to get it down, get it set up. What have you got to lose down by a pair? Great work by Woodstock. Bringing it in on the attack, then circling back to the far boards, LaPearl. Woodstock really doesn't need to shoot. They need puck possession. LaPearl leaves it there for Hannah Gubbins. She did fire a shot, deflected wide. Now spank through the far corner to Gabby Young. Blades just can't get it out. And now fed in front to Conenberg, who seals the deal. Her second of the night gives the Woodstock Wasps a three-goal lead with just a minute 18 to play. Fantastic shift by that line for Woodstock. You knew when Conenberg took that pass, she wasn't going to miss going top shelf on the glove side. It's a shame these two teams will not play for a fifth time because this is the fourth meeting. And with Woodstock set to win it, each will have beaten the other twice. But the three previous games were in the regular season, of course, this one for all the marbles. And the bigger piece of hardware. Now I don't think you'll be seeing the Blades pull the goaltender. Haley skates it back in. She really turned her game up to another level in this third period. Cross ice feed from Haley. Got the assist on Conenberg's goal there. Those two a really nice combination. This will be the last time they play together as a shot here. It's a blocker save from Bremel. 38 seconds left till you can start to party in Woodstock. And the Blades can't keep it in there. Banked ahead. 
Down into the corner. 20 seconds to play. And they're jumping around in the Woodstock student section. For the Kingdom Blades, this was their first ever appearance in a championship game. And I think they'll be back again. Not a single senior on this team. But for now, it's all Woodstock. They can celebrate a second consecutive Division II state title. Doing it with a strong finish. A 4-1 win here at Gutterson Fieldhouse. A pair of goals for the captain, Isabel Conenberg. Cassidy Haley, a goal and an assist. There was that third goal too. I didn't hear who got credit for it, but a little miscommunication behind the Blades net. Coming out from behind the Blades net, it was Morgan Rivard. And next thing you know, it was 3-1 with about two minutes to play right when you felt like the Blades were gonna make that push down a goal. That little bit of extra help all Woodstock needed to finish the job and win this one by three. That leaves just one high school hockey game to be played in the state of Vermont this year. This season, I guess we'll say. The teams will be back in the late fall. But for now, the anticipation will build for the boys' state championship. We'll have that for you next, but we'll stick around and let you enjoy the on-ice ceremony here. Two teams that obviously respect one another, two coaching staffs that clearly respect one another. We'll stay out there following the handshakes and get the hardware. Thanks for being with us tonight, and we'll let you listen in to the in-house public address system as they congratulate all the players involved in tonight's game and Give the big trophy to the Woodstock Wasps.